think I might have an explanation, ma'am? An explanation of what, pray? Oh, come, don't be absurd. When we arranged to travel together, I was told that your companion would be Mrs. Bridgeworth, a spinster of fifty. Now I find that it is Miss Chater, the same Miss Chater that I had cause to dismiss not six weeks ago. Are you deceiving me, ma'am? Or has she imposed herself on you, like she did on me? Certainly not! Do we have to discuss this in front of Flora? She's very distressing for her. Really? Well, maybe there is some justice here, considering the distress that Miss Chater caused on my sister's household. I have every faith in Flora. Oh, do you indeed? Ah. She has shown herself to be untrustworthy. Remember that the reputation of this party is in my hands. Now, how may I ensure this when one of our party may be misbehaving with any man that we may chance to meet? You need not concern yourself, my lord. I would not dream of inflicting my immoral person on your party, and I will leave for England on the first boat. Oh, oh, oh. oh Lee, what have you done? I've only just managed to persuade her to come downstairs. But she has shown herself to be a woman of considerable affront. Oh. In that knowing that she was to be one of my party, she came anyway, despite the consequences. Well, not exactly. God almighty, you actually persuaded the young woman to come and gave no indication whatsoever of my presence? Oh, you have done her a great injustice, Lee. She's not what you think she is at all. Anyway, I cannot proceed without her. So please, Lee, if you have ever made an error of judgment of anyone's character before, call it to mind now. And give Flora a second chance. I shall accede to your requirements out of sheer necessity. However, one slip up and I will have her escorted back to England. I am so dreadfully sorry, my dear, for the way you have been thrust into Lord Craythorne's company. Especially on the carriage journeys. It must have been uncomfortable for you. Think no more of it, Aunt Letty. Besides, we can't expect the poor man to ride horseback halfway across France, however much he may like the exercise, simply to avoid my company. Sympathy from you, Miss Chater. I should never have supposed it. And that's the most pleasant exchange we've enjoyed all journey. I told you that his opinion of you would improve. Oh, now, when we arrive in Paris, we shall be staying with the Comte de Sainte Croix, who is a friend of Lord Craythorne's. But be on your guard. He's rumoured to be a terrible flirt. <laughs> Mrs. Wilde is surrounded by friends. She will return presently, I assure you. Indeed, monsieur. Hey, you do not object to Miss Chater enjoying herself, mon ami? Hey, Miss Chater is never happier than when receiving the attention of men. The more, the merrier. I think we touched the raw nerve there. Saint-Croix's attentions. I'm not flirt with you myself. I'm not attracted by soiled goods. My lord, you are being grossly unfair. Am I indeed? Have you not been flirting with Saint-Croix to the point of indecency from the very moment of our arrival? No, it is he who has been flirting with me. Whilst you're all unwilling, I suppose. No, I was not unwilling, but... Of course not. As any man might discover. The truth hurts, does it? No, ma'am, you'll not slap me. I'll have you cause no more trouble. You'll not seduce Matthew either. I'd rather be seduced by you myself. I would rather suffer the worst torments of hell. 
I loved Malcolm Brenner and I believed him to love me in return. I've never even thought of seducing Matthew Warren, who I think is rather unfortunate and at least one of his relations. You are impertinent. Did you really think that a man with such expensive habits such as Malcolm Brenner would marry a woman from such impecunious circumstances? And as for Saint Croix, maybe as a mistress. How dare you! When you are the one who has brought me into this house, he is a friend of yours and above me in station, as you say. What was I to say to such a man? How was I to throw him off? Do you really think I wanted him hanging over my shoulders when there was a whole city to be seen and explored? Do you really think I wanted to talk about the colour of my eyes or my gown? Miss Chater! One word! One word from you is all it would have taken and he would have left me alone. Am I so utterly unworthy of your protection? Draw a sketch of the king this afternoon, but you know I am struggling to remember what he was wearing. Does a man remember what another man is wearing? Now, were it a beautiful woman, the same that would be another matter. <laughs> Enough, Robert, please. Miss Chaser is far too tired to listen to your nonsense and far too intelligent to believe it. <laughs> Looking for the scars, Miss Chater. I have convinced Sanquois to allow one of his maids, Cassette, to journey with us to Venice. Oh, I see. I thought that she could give you and Mrs. Wilde some assistance on our journey. What? You're not dismissing me then? Again? But I, I struck you. Oh, you did indeed. And a handsome blow it was. I agree that a, a gentleman should be made aware that his remarks are not to a lady's taste, but there are less violent methods, surely. Here's to absent friends. Me, Letty, Catherine, you know, and Cassette. Mm. What a pity that Cassette has to stay in on such a fine day. Mm. Ah, Miss Chater, why is it I don't need to say anything for you to understand me? Lee is so good to me, never throwing my dependence on him in my face. But how, how can I ignore his wish that I should marry well? I think you have to be very sure of your own feelings and of those of the other person. You're right, I must be completely sure. Will you not tell him? You have my word. Could I beg a small favour? If it is in my power. It's just, if I wanted to send her a message. Having been in a similar situation with Malcolm Brenner, I will not do anything that will damage her reputation. I swear I would never do such a thing. Please help. I must see her alone. If you give me your word that this will only be for a limited time, until you feel able to tell your cousin, then I will help you. Woohoo! Will you relieve Cassette from attending Mrs. Wilde so I can meet with her in the garden? I told you to be cautious. And I will. And you promised to help. Okay, but if you're not back in half an hour, I'm coming for you. Ah, oh, Miss Chater. I thought you intended to retire. Well, I, I did, my lord, but then I realised that it was such a beautiful evening that I was going to come and enjoy the fresh air. Are you homesick for England? Oh, no, not at all, my lord. Everyone who is dear to me is here with me. Are oh, they? And I'm really excited about enjoying new experiences. It's all so new, you see. Oh, I'm glad that the journey is matching your expectations. Ah, oh. oh, dear cousin. Uh, I'm wondering how many people are walking around this evening. No one else, on my honour. Well, then let us go inside. 